There is a controversy. A controversial figure is coming to town to speak at a private function on Monday by invite only. Gerd Wilders has made his name and his mark. Uh, he's a Dutch politician, but he's also perhaps the world's most outspoken opponent of Islam, says he doesn't actually hate uh, Muslims, but he questions Islam as a religion of peace and believes that, in fact, the Quran does implore the faithful to acts of violence. Uh, that being said, he's obviously uh, run afoul of many who would disagree, none more so than the executive director of the North American Muslim Foundation, Farouk Khan, who has joined the Oakley Show this morning at Talk Radio AM 640. Mr. Khan, welcome to the program. Hello. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Gert Wilders is coming to town. It's a private matter, but he's critical uh, of Islam, and you're critical of the decision to bring him here. Uh, why are you being critical of the decision to allow somebody to come and speak freely here in Canada? Because uh, the people like these are hate mongers, and their agenda is very clear, that they want to cleanse the Western societies of a scorn called Muslims. Their ultimate objective is to get rid of the Muslim populations from the Western societies. And uh, their their idea is that uh, to revive the new crusade, basically, and to get, uh, you know, shut down all the mosques and throw out all the Muslims who are living either in Canada, U.S., you know, or the Western, uh, you know, Europe. How do you draw that extreme conclusion? He says he doesn't hate Muslims per se. He just Well, well I mean... But the point here is, first of all, you cannot separate Muslim from Islam. You know, we really need to understand that here. Okay. So there is now, no distinction. You're saying uh, the devout Muslim must uh, live up to the uh, what is prescribed by the Quran. Oh, of course. I mean, Islam is the basic uh, Quran is the basic scripture, uh, and you can, you cannot uh, you know be a Muslim without uh, understanding and accepting the words of God. That is defined. It's like, you know, a Christian. Uh, how can a Christian be a Christian without understanding and accepting a Bible or a Jew without taking, you know, the, the, their scripture or the Hindu? Uh, th- that's beside the point here. Uh, you know, the point here is that what is their real objective? What is their real agenda? The far right in uh, the West, uh, including this guy coming from uh, from Holland, uh, uh, has a very clear agenda, and that is to get rid of the Muslim population. And I have said it previously, too, right, that I have I have the fear, uh, and, and I'm convinced now that there will come a time, because of these hate mongers, that the Muslims living in Canada will eventually be interned into the concentration camps in Kingston and probably sent to guest chambers. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I want to be clear on this point. You maintain that the end game of folks like Geert Wilders or those who support him, their agenda is to send Muslims to concentration camps in Kingston and ultimately to gas chambers? Yes, I'm convinced. I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. What gives you, wait wait a minute, what gives you uh, any reasonable assumption that that's the end, end game or the... Because that is where, where, you know, that is where it is eventually going to lead. Look, what happened to the Jews in, in Europe in the 1930s in Germany? You know, it started out as a very mild movement, you know, against them. But eventually it led to the Holocaust. And that is exactly the game plan of these extreme right extremists. Well, no, there's a different that context entirely in this day and age. Well, I mean, well, there's no such thing as day and age, you know. Yes, there is. We're open to we're open to debate and free speech and shining a light on people if they are hate mongers. We can challenge them. These are all ideals. These are all ideals. They're not ideals. We're talking about it now. Yours is a dissenting point of view. It happened in Rwanda. It happened in Rwanda. It happened in Bosnia. Are, are, it yes, in Kosovo. Right, you know, right, right. In this day and age. Let's you know, talk about enlightened Western nations here, sir. Well, enlightened Western nations, unfortunately, if the head are not going to prevail, if reasons are not going to prevail, and if these people are given opportunities to expose their hate mongering, then yes, this is what is going to happen. Well, why don't we expose if it is hate or whatever it is, however well, one might judge it to be, well, let's at least one. expose it, shouldn't we? Well, that's, that's, that's exactly what... So let him speak. Is. Why, why would he not be allowed to speak so that we can at least, in the court of public opinion or the forum of democratic persuasion, we can challenge it? No, we can. We do not. Well, if, if they wanted to challenge it, then you know what? The, what Christian College should have done is invited perhaps us 
to uh, speak against him right in that very forum but by allowing only him to speak they are not giving an equal opportunity see how do you give an equal opportunity you give equal opportunity by inviting the other side well by giving you... them an fair time like for example you right now doing mm. it is you are giving an equal opportunity the other side to come in and express their opinion so the, the canadian community can hear them out well, perhaps they'd like, maybe, I, I don't know what their thinking is, except to say that, you know, on occasion, people do invite single guests to opine or offer their point of view. And uh, look, the uh, people who are bringing him in besides the Canada Christian College are also involved in free speech. Uh, this is the International Free Press Society. Well, then why, why, why doesn't international, uh, you know, free societies in also invite people at the very forum who are against these people here? Well... But it's their prerogative. Perhaps they just want uh, one speaker, a focused message, no, no, and then you why? can... But why? That means, well. that means that they only wanted to expose one side of the story in order to propagate the, their message that Muslims is a fifth column in the society, that they are a danger to the security of this country, that they are out here to destroy them, and, and eventually create this mass hysteria in society where the majority of the people stands up and say, you know what? Let's get rid of them. Well, well, let me ask you. I mean, then, do you do you discount that there is a fifth column in certain quarters? Take the UK, for example. I mean, with radicalized Muslims or the Islamists. There is, look, there is fifth column in every society. They are nutcrackers. They are on the fringes. They are, you know, petty thieves and criminals. But they say they're living up to the precepts of uh, of the Quran. I mean, and you're saying uh, every Muslim must be devout and to the point of literally uh, taking no, to heart the message in the Quran. So they're they're saying they're taking that message very literally. No, no, but but they're they, moderate they are Muslims nuts, are the are, apostates. They are nutcrackers. They are nutcrackers. Among the Jewish communities, there are nutcrackers among the Christian communities. Are they going out and actually uh, look, killing people en mass? I'll give you an example. There are nutcrackers in the Hindu community. For example, look what happened in Gujarat with the, uh, with the Muslims. You know, right in the 80s during this Mo- Modi guy here. Uh-huh. There was a mass slaughter. So there are, there are nutcrackers everywhere. Well, you're right. So but point but, here is you do not take the nutcrackers and you, you do not label the entire religion. You do not label the scripture. But Mr. Wilders, is, if I'm understanding it correctly, is addressing perhaps what you're addressing. Uh, there are a radical, there's a radical no, no, element no, within no, Islam. No, 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 no. See, there is, there is a difference between an academic debate and there is a difference, uh, and mass hysteria. These people, so there, is a, there is a group of these individuals, the far right, uh, their agenda is to create a mass history. They are saying it on one hand. Oh, no, 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 we don't hate Muslims. No, no, but yet, you know, we think, you know, that Quran has, has a problem in it. Okay, well, you know what? Let's ban the Quran in Canada. Okay, let's shut down all the masjids. I don't think anybody's suggesting that. Well, I think that is the ultimate object. Well, you think that, but there's no uh, proof or there's no evidence well, that that's well, the end well, game. You know what? The proof is in the pudding. No, the, the pudding is the charter of rights that allows you the well, freedom that, to practice your religion. Charter of right, that charter of right can be suspended in a matter of five minutes. Look what Ugh. happened during the FLQ crisis here, right? here in this country when wow. Mr. Pierre Trudeau brought about emergency law. You know, this, this, is, this is perfectly legal. Tomorrow, hypothetically speaking, let's say hypothetically Wow, tomorrow, uh, this is a, a wild hypothesis. The Canadian government can bring an act of parliament saying it, Muslim communities in Canada is a threat to national security. That's it. It's over. Really? All of, which, oh, politician, yes. which politician would dare go down that road? That, that well, would be political I mean, suicide. Well, you know what? We we never know what will happen. I unless, think you're being uh, unless uh, unless otherwise totally irrational and, and alarmist you know, here. I'm, I'm not sorry. Being irrational. I'm t- I'm sharing you with my fears. I'm sharing you a common fear now that is now prevailing within the Muslim community. We talk about this thing on a daily basis that this is going to meet us. I have even told my kids and my family, "Be ready, guys." In this country, there will come a time that we will all be killed. Wow. There will uh, be a lynch mob. Oh, my country. God. Because I mean, of really? People who are out there, you know. And you're the zombies. executive director of the North yes, American Muslim Foundation. Yes. And this is the kind oh, of thing that you're preaching to your kids. And, I mean, you're, you're selling I'm them this. Lo- my, I'm not preaching to my kids. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, I am preparing right. them mentally that, you know what, this may right. happen in this very country. i uh, got to leave you on that note. All right. I, I appreciate your point of view. Uh, right. We'll see if anybody subscribes to it. There you go. 
Farouk Khan is the uh, executive director of the North American Muslim Foundation. Lovely. Internment camps in Kingston and ultimately gas chambers. That's the end gamer agenda of the anti-Muslim. Uh, it, let's call it the folks who would rail against these Islamo-fascists. That's really their, their agenda. And Geert Wilders represents that, which is why he wants to keep him out of Canada, or at least have him challenged when the guy speaks Monday to an invite-only occasion, uh, presented in part by the Canada Christian College.